So you could save it for later if you needed to go to coffee before processing. But I'm going to go to the preview page. Let's do a preview. And so we've got the preview information, the total payroll cost. Now, if you were to do a, a transfer into like a payroll checking account, which could be useful sometimes so that you have one checking account that just processes payroll, then you might just transfer the money from your checking account to the payroll account and then process payroll out of it. That way, if there's a problem with payroll, you can have a checking account that just has payroll transactions in it, which sometimes can be a little bit easier. And this can be a, a spot where you could say, okay, now I'm going to transfer money into the payroll account so I can process payroll. But we're just going to take it directly out of the checking account. Then down here, we got save for later again, or uh, submit payroll. And we've got the preview. Let's go to the preview. Gives us a nice little report in essence of the information. So let's check it out. We've got Adam, we've got Erica, and then we've got the net on the total. So this is kind of what I mean about us being able to see each employee as like group together one employee, right? Because now I've got the salary for the both of them, which is going to increase the uh, payroll expense. We've got then the withholdings for all of them, the federal, the social security and Medicare, those things are going to be increasing the liability. And then the difference between those items, which I believe is going to be the the 4583.33 and plus the other pay of 2400 minus the 1060 minus the 432. Well, hold, let me do that one more time. We've got the 4583.33 plus 2400 minus the 1060 minus the 432.96 minus the 101.26. That would be the, the net impact on the checking account but it would be done with two paychecks. So that's kind of the tricky thing. If you were thinking about it as just one lump sum, what's the impact? Because you got to do the bank reconciliations and the bank reconciliations are going to have two checks to tie out. And then you've got the employer portion of uh, these two items that are going to be increasing payroll tax expense and the other side going to payroll liability. And they also have the summary down here, which probably another an easier way to see it. This uh, 6933 represents the 4583 and the 24, the 4583 and the 24. So this is the 6983.33 minus the withholdings minus the 1594.22 would be the impact on the checking account. And then you've got the uh, taxes for the employer side. All right, let's check it out. Enough of this submit. I can submit or save for later. Let's submit it. Let's just do it, man. For crying out loud, just do it. Okay. So I think the next check number we were on was 1022. So I'm going to do that. And then I'll just put this at 1023. Let's do that. Okay. And then if I check out the pay stubs that we need to provide to the employees, we've got the information on it. I'm going to close this out and then close this out. And can I make this a little bit larger? Like, like, so they changed the layout of my Adobe page, but here's our pay stub, uh, information on a paycheck by paycheck. So notice that you have to have the current information and the year to date information, what they actually earned and then what was taken out of, and then what was taken out in order to get the net pay on the current pay and the year to date pay. So that's going to be that. So I'm going to close that back out and let's go ahead and finish, finish him. So then take payroll off your to-do list. So let's say, remind me later. And then there it is. So now let's go to my check register and check out what happens. So I'm going to go down to the, let's say the accounting on the left-hand side. And then I'm in the chart of accounts. And I can find that in the business view, by the way, if you wanted to check it out on the business view, it's under the, the book. That's not the business view. The business view is here and let's go to the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. That's where it's located there. You got to turn it on if you're in the sample company. And then I'm going to go into the check register. So if I go into the check register, there's our, our two checks that have been put in place. Now let's go to our financials, going to go to the balance sheet, run it. 
And then if I zoom in a bit and we go down to the liab, well, we've got the checking account obviously went down. Checking account went down uh, here by the two checks that we wrote and they're gonna be payroll checks, specially marked payroll checks. Now that's for the full, that's for the net amount that it went down by after the withholdings. And then if I go back up and the other side's gonna be on the income statement. So now you got the Feb payroll, the Feb payroll. So here's the wages. So if I go into that, this is the full amount, including uh, including not, af not having taken out the, the taxes. And then we're gonna go to the difference, which is gonna be on the first balance sheet page where we have the liabilities down below. So now we've got the payroll liabilities. And so here's the federal. This includes both the employee and uh, employer portions on the liabilities. And then going back up, finally, we have our portion of the payroll taxes down here on the income statement, our portion of Social Security and Medicare. And it would include the uh, federal unemployment tax, but that's a small tax, so we didn't add it in our practice. So I'm gonna right click on the tab to the right and duplicate. And let's just take a look at some of these sub ledger reports. You've got a whole host of sub ledger reports to help you to generate uh, the information needed for the employees as well as the payroll forms, w the 941s to 940 W2s, W3. So let's go to the reports on the left, close up the boogie and scroll down. So we've got our sales tax employees payroll report. So here's all the payroll reports, a lot of information. So let's go to the payroll summary by employee. I think it's a good kind of register type of report. So up top, we've got just uh, for uh, 228. So this is the information for 228 now being broken out in terms of the gross pay. So you've got the gross pay total, and then you've got Adam, and then you've got Erica, and then you've got the uh, withholdings on the total here. And then for Adam and Erica gives us the net pay, the impact on the actual uh, checking account. So again, this is where it gets a little tricky when you think of it as a journal entry, because when you reconcile the bank accounts, it will show up as two separate checks. So if you record it in your checking account, just like when we use the undeposited fund or the clearing account or the payment to deposit account, if you record it as one lump sum, because you're, you're recording it from a third party, for example, that did the payroll into the system, then you're gonna have to be careful when you do the bank reconciliations for it, uh, because obviously it's gonna be multiple checks that you're reconciling to. And then you've got our portion, the social security and Medicare uh, down here for the employer side. Let's try to change this to Jan starting in January through the 28th and apply that out. So now we've got the gross pay at the 13, uh, 9, 66, 66. So let's see if that will tie out to the, that should tie out to our income statement. So if I run the income statement for the total for the two periods and run and roll down to wages, we're at the 13, 9, 66, 66, right? So see how your, your payroll reports should basically tie into that. Now, some of the tax stuff isn't gonna tie out because we made an adjustment last time to, in our practice problem to match out to the bank reconciliations. And that's where you need to be careful with the payroll because we did that for a practice problem purposes, but you don't really want to do that in practice because this information is going to be used to make your information returns to 940s, the 941, the W2s and the W3s. And what you want to have happen, of course, is for that information on those information returns, the information on the pay stubs, and the information reflected on your financial statements to mirror each other, to be correct. You wanna be able to double check them at the end of the year because if there's an audit or any kind of problem, everything should tie out.